Yes, yes, dogs. Howdy, everybody. I'm back in the garage today and uh, back working on mom's knife. Anyway, uh, I want to do some file work on it, make it pretty and fancy for her. And the only drawback to that is I've never done any file work, really, other than just some jimping and stuff for your thumb. And, and uh, well, if I've never done stainless and I've never done file work, I might as well do it all in one damn knife. And then I went, uh, maybe I ought to practice a little bit. So I'm going to let you quit looking at my ugly face and put you on the bench here. And kind of show you what we got going on and then maybe do some time lapse. I don't know if YouTube will let me do 15 minutes or longer than that now or not, but uh, we'll find out. Uh, I might have to condense this one down to 15 as well. But uh, yeah, I'll just kind of shoot you down there and show you what the hell is going on. And I also wanted to thank you all for even spending the time to watch. Probably just the first part and click off, but <laughs> uh, I, I, I do appreciate it. All right, so here's mom's knife. Got the bevels rough ground in and dicemed up. And what I did, and you can see I screwed. If you can see, what I've done is scribed lines every quarter inch. I did a center line and then I, there we go every quarter inch all the way through the the entire knife so I did the dire handle rather so from here went all the way around and all the way and all the way back to right where the distal taper stops and you can see there's my distal tapers off so I need to take some more off of this side um, which will make the blade probably a quarter inch shorter which sucks but it is what it is so, but right where the distal taper sta starts is where I started. I put a scribe line and obviously I did it down the center. So, jimping, like, there you go, that. It's kind of the same thing on this one, actually. So, that's the, that, and then on my EDC. That's the extent of my spine file work, is stuff like that. I mean, I've done more knives than those three, but you get the idea. It's pretty basic stuff that I've done so far. And uh, what I want to do on this knife with these marks, but I'm not sure how, how big of a pain in the butt that's going to be or how much work or if I can even do it. Well, actually, I'm positive I can do it because, uh, well, that's just what I do. I'm just positive I can do it. So what I've done is cut off a chunk of this is 1095 and scribe the outline of another blade maybe this will help there we go so scribe another outline i'm going to cut this out on the bandsaw and i'm going to use this as practice and i might as well try and make a, a knife usable knife while i practice that's why i did this instead of just going on and trying to practice on the back of side of something might as well if it works out then I've got a good knife, right? That's got file work on it, kind of cool. And if I don't, well, it's 1095. Thanks to Dave from Evader Knives, cool guy, lots of inspiration and lots of good tips. He said to zoom my camera out to 16 millimeter and I kind of think I figured out what that means on the lens there while I'm showing these knives. So this is the second knife that I was making in the last video. And so that's a little easier to see, I suppose. Uh, howdy everybody <laughs> so I blew the piece of shit up there's the knife blank that's yeah almost cut out the wheel here well for some reason it felt like it was crossed that it, it wouldn't adjust anymore and the, I couldn't get the blade back on I couldn't get this to come off and with a little bit of well, a whole shitload of frustration and 36 inches of persuasion. Snap on pry bar. I got the wheel off. Now I can 
figure out I think it's probably boogered up in the threads right here and I don't know if I've got a tap for that they don't look like Acme threads but let's see there we go yeah they just look like standard threads I'll grab my thread gauge and actually I can see right there that thread is a little boogered but I was getting it past there in in that cast piece yeah they're boogered a little bit but not yeah maybe the oof uh, it shouldn't matter that it's wobbling a little bit anyhow uh, if it ain't one thing it's 20 others right we'll see if i can get those cleaned up if not i'll have to use a thread file if i've got that thread pitch on a thread file but i'm pretty sure i do um yeah i'm just rambling now because i'm pissed <laughs> so cheers and hey what's in the box you'll never know until i tell you i'll be back after yeah when i'll i'll be back when i'm back please hold all right everybody let's see if i can that's yeah, kind of holding the light there anyway this is what goes in here and this is the shaft right here that raises this up and down this is where the axle for the wheel goes in and I ran a thread chaser in this it was fine I spun a 3816 nut brand new out of my bolt bin on this it was fine eh. so but when you try and thread them together they're not fine what I'm thinking is, and I'm going to zoom you in here a bit, that this shaft, and you can probably see, look at the shadow. It's a little weeble wobble, which shouldn't really matter that much, but apparently it does. So I'm going to take these two nuts, these jam nuts off, which retain this spring. To get that second jam nut up, well, they're thinner than the wrenches. Okay? So this is a lifesaver come on focus focus you suck okay this is a lifesaver there you go see that hopefully you can see i don't think you can see very damn well this light in here sucks okay all right so this is the tracking and it goes out the back of the bandsaw here is where the shaft for the wheel goes i'm sure so if i can show you there's the axle shaft on the on the wheel new tire you can see goes like so on there and then this I'm gonna take this off again goes up through here like this and the springs down here and this is what raises the wheel up and tire to tension the blade uh, and I don't know why, but it's going in just fine. And like I said, I, I, there was no problem with this. I spun a nut on that. I could not in the machine make, I don't know why I'm videotaping this, just to vent, I think. Anyhow, see y'all in a little bit. Boo. Howdy, everybody. Um, I'm back and uh, after a break for a little bit of moonshine and this is hibiscus iced tea good shit let me tell you and very necessary when this kind of thing happens just to step back relax have an adult beverage 
Not that I'm really qualified to be an adult, but anyway, I've got her fingered out to where I think what happened was. So I've got all this loose here, right? And here's the mechanism, the tensions, and it also tracks the wheel and tire. This sticks out the back of the machine, that's how you track it. The uh, This rod, threaded rod, goes in here and moves this up and down. Simple enough, right? I might want to grease that. Eh, probably not. So, if you can see without my fat hands getting in the way. Okay. Come on. Now, you can see it slides up and down, and yes, I think I will grease those. What had happened is this had pot been pushed up so hard to tension that these blades that it popped these keys that slide in and out. See those, these lugs? They come out that way, but uh, uh, yeah, it had popped them out and then wouldn't let it come down anymore. To lower that wheel to get the blade back on and let me see if I can just carefully if you look uh, yeah blade 99 inches so I took the man at his word that was not me that wrote that what's happened is I think the blades need to be about 98 inches because What's happened is this is out of its max travel up to tension these blades with that measurement. So, and after a while, this blade, this blade, out of the way, stretch, they stretch. I mean, it'll stretch a little bit, especially when you're cranking on them because I tend to over tighten stuff like that just because, and that might have been the cause of the warp, but not by me because it was warped when I got it. But anyhow, um, so I'm gonna order, next time I order blades, I've got five or six brand new ones. I just got them three or four months ago. Uh, I'll order 98 and a half inches blades. If any of y'all have a better idea of, of that, I don't know how much half an inch in overall length would lower that. And I welcome any, any suggestions, but uh, that's what's happened, the travel it maxed his travel out and then it bound up on there and that's why it, it didn't book the threads it just was caught up on these ledges with these lug these feet so it wouldn't come down low enough to put the belt back on and uh, that was a little bit frustrating but we've got her figured out I'm gonna take this back apart I'm gonna clean all of this up in here and dirty and whatever and I'll lightly grease these slides just so it doesn't bind it's a little easier to operate See if I can't cut my finger off with the blade again and uh, bring you back. Of course, after I finish this, might have been my second one, who knows. Cheers. What's in the box? Howdy everybody, uh, it's the next day and I was editing the video and realized I didn't show y'all it actually fixed and running again, so here you go. Uh, so that's the warp in that blade. This was warped or not, honestly. Oh, yeah, they're both warped. So now maybe I just need to get them in synchronization, opposite warps, and just cancel each other out, right? Thanks for watching. Later, folks.